And look at me, she takes after me. <laughs> all right, let's go get all the crab traps. Oh, the seaweed's back. Come on, one down. Real quick, ready? Stay as afraid to get on the boat. Jump, you got it, by yourself. Yay, good job. Take one, Claire. I got her first. Okay, come on. Ready? One, two, three, yay. Oh, the shoes are on the wrong feet. The seaweed is coming. We're going to pull our crab chops out for the season. Season ends. The last day is May 1st. So the season closes May 2nd, and it's like April 28th or 29th or now. What is it? 28th or 29th? I don't know. I don't know. It's late April. But the, weather, exactly. the weather's closing in tomorrow, so. It's, it's April 29th, so we're getting them out. So, usually when we go pull the crab traps, you know, we have a ton of bait on the boat, like fish and then some of us pig's feet. But since we're hauling them out for the season, we're just going to come back with hopefully 10 traps here. We lost a couple throughout the season too, so Sarah's going to jump in the water with a mask and hopefully find a couple that are cut off. It's windy, that's blowing about 15 to 18 knots. If it's clear back here. We'll so if it's clear, we'll see if you can find them. We'll but how many time to haul them out. <laughs> Sadie's in her cave. Maybe it's 23rd. Maybe I pulled them 22 times. This has been my 23rd pull of the season and final. It's windy. So like Sarah said, there's a 23rd time pulling the traps this season. We're pulling them out now for the season almost over. And whoever guesses how many crab claws we harvested this season, you're going to win a free stance fishing t-shirt, a performance shirt of your uh, choice. So comment below. The first person to guess the number will win. And uh, if no one guesses it within a week, whoever gets closest to it will win. Got the mat. We usually have the mat back there, and then that's when we pull the traps on. Like a rug. It's like a rug or a mat. So but uh, we're gonna use a piece of kitchen non-skid, and then when we pull the traps, we're gonna put on the bow, put them on top of this utility mat as well. It is blowing like 20 knots, you guys. This white caps in the bay here, but the boat ride is great. You know, it's a two-foot chop, and you know, we're riding right over it. Hopefully, the girls are happy for stone crabbing. Notoriously makes this really hard for whoever's pulling the traps, but yeah, that, one was that one was good. You can see all the growth on there. These lines, uh, trap lines, have been growing so much algae and <laughs> stuff on them. Sadie thinks it's funny all season, but we're wiping them off. We'll pressure clean these traps too and get them all uh, clean up and put them away. Yeah. Ew, that's muddy, huh? Yeah. Let's see. It is a lot Is there one in there? there? Ooh, I see a crab in there. Now look at. This trap here, I mean, it's, oh, that one's full of eggs. This is why season is closing, because the females are starting to have eggs now, so that's a that's often. a good sign. I had one there's, last there's a big one in there, huh? See the eggs? See the eggs right there? So that's a stone crab with eggs, and we're going to let her go, and she can go lay a bunch more babies. There's a good one. See? Crab. That's a crab. His big one's good for sure, so we'll just pop them off like that. You want to measure the little one? Yeah, measure the little Close. one. Just, just short. short. So we just keep that one. We got one all so right. far. So all these traps are going to move up to the bow now. And that's another great thing about this X3. The bow space is huge. It's like perfect for this because you can put so much stuff up there. One. <laughs> Nine more. I'm downwind. I'm going to get dirty here. Trap number two. So you can see we have the zip tie on there. And that's where the zip ties come in handy because the lid actually, the little latches would pop loose on it. Yeah, but the zip one. tie held it, so. Oh, there's a couple in there. Ooh, Ooh nice good. one. That one there's well over legal size. And let's check a smaller one while we're at it. A little short. So that one's there's good. Careful. She's gonna. Claire, you get pinched. Oh, Claire's going in. Claire's not afraid. You gotta be careful the crabs don't pinch you. This big one's good for sure. Oh, uh, so hang close. on. 
Okay, we're gonna keep the big one. Another one just barely just touched. Close. We're gonna let it go just my to be safe. My gauge might be a little bit different than like the police gauge. That's every C gauge. Yeah, so true. It's just not worth it. Not worth risking it for a millimeter. Let go, buddy. Look at that. He got in both claws. He didn't want to let go. That was good. That's good for sure. Yeah. It's good. Sarah's got the eye for it. So she's popping it off there and throwing it back in there. And we use the knife a lot of times too to remove the claw. They'll drop it themselves. On to the third one. We're drifting really quick with this wind. Yeah, the water cleared up. So if we can find those couple that got cut off earlier this year, hopefully we can find them. Because the traps are like 55 bucks each. Gap for the backup. That's our carbon fiber gap right there. It's an eight foot gap with a two inch hook. Check them out. Really good. Ooh, this one's got some crabs in it, you guys. It's loaded up. This trap has got some crabs. Look at this one. This can be exciting here. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's there what we're talking about. Trap. That's what we like to see. That is what we like to see, you guys. Look at the fish bones there. All right, so, you know, you can harvest two claws legally on a crab. Some people only take one, but I promise you all the commercial guys out here, the thousands of traps take both. This crab has no claws, but he's still living. He's growing back his new ones. New claws around. Obviously, some of them don't make it, but a lot of them do grow them back, you guys. And we catch it, lots of crabs every season with no claws. So we just follow the rules and, you know, we're just going to follow them until they change. But look at the size of that claw That's there. I mean, that is a large claw right there. That's a beauty. That one obviously a keeper there too, so that's a double keeper there. That's what we like to see. Ooh, Sadie, look at that one in there. Another double. Another double there too. Where's he gonna double check? Oh, it's double. Double trouble, Claire. Now the kids love stone crabs. I mean, I didn't eat stone crab until about two or three years ago and I only eat a little bit of it, but she's two and a half and loves it and Sadie's five and they've been eating it for a long time and they all love it, so another keeper there. Good. Good. Looking good, you guys. Now remember, whoever guesses the right number, only one guess per person, the right number of crab claws for the entire season. No one gets it exact, whoever gets closest to it. You're gonna get a free stands, fishing t-shirt, performance shirt. Short. He's spitting. He's silly, huh? Good one. We that get five or six out of that one. Let's do it. Ah, I just missed it. I was close. It's windy. Oh yeah. There's a moose. There's a moose in there. It says there's a jumbo, you guys. A moose for her exact words. Let's see what we got. Let's see. Oh, wow, look at the size of that one. That is what we're talking about there. That's a colossal. Moose, right? Yeah, that's huge. Fish bone. Look at the size of that one. Oh, oh. Nick, stop. Oh, I got a picture with him. Well, I'll get him out for you. Just... Well, he got bit. We got to get a picture with the girls here. No way. No way, Jose. Oh, I don't want to. They don't get big by being dumb. Look at the size of that claw. He's coming at you. He's angry. That is a big stone crab there. That is a big claw there. I mean, look at it compared to my hand there. Joe's stone crab would love to have that claw. I promise you that. I don't want to take pictures. Oh, there's our next one. Quick, grab it. While we're here. Oh my gosh, I forgot the crab was there and almost stepped on We got up. a crab on the deck here. We just so happened to drift over our next one, so I grabbed it. I still got it. Ooh, he's strong. Even these small guys are strong. I mean, just the force of them trying to pinch and close their arms is crazy. <laughs> he's, he's good, he's a keeper. So we just pop the claw off like that and let him go. Ah, this one's empty. Empty? One, one little baby one. One little baby one. Well, that one was loaded and the next one was empty. But we just drifted over so we did two in one yeah, shot. Right, yeah.
No, the big one's definitely good. We're gonna check the other smaller one. Just short. I'll be a keeper next year. Probably be a keeper next week. Probably. <laughs> Look at this little baby one. Oh, look, the throat's broken. That's why they're. Yeah, the throat's broken, so some of the other crab claws probably went out of that. So, that's probably why there's only one young, not so smart one in here. No, get all the food he wants. A, I'm not getting him with the tongs. I need to think, be smarter. Oops. Bye bye, buddy. See you later. Bye bye. Yeah, normally I'd replace that because I have spare parts the boat, but it's the end of the season. Let's see. Number six. Could be a lucky one. Yeah. There's a few in there. Oh, eggs. eggs. Lots of eggs now. This is why season's closing. Yeah. That might be a keeper claw, but we don't... It's illegal to take claws yeah. from the females, so... Bye-bye. So, That's a good one. That one there is definitely good. We're gonna check this one here. Let's see. Good. Keeper. The last pull of the season. I know my mom wants some. Sarah wants some. Landon's never had it. Landon's never had it. He's behind the camera. He's gotta try some. The kids want some. So we're gonna take what we get here. Last pull. More crabbies, baby. Big one. Another big one. Wow. Oh yeah, that's what we're talking about. Most of these traps are gone out here. There's only a couple lines left. You know, all the commercial guys pretty much already got theirs out. And then most direct people too, too. There's only, I only see two other lines there. One's a wrecked trap and one green's commercial. So everyone's all out early for season, but it was worth staying out the extra 10 days. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I almost fell over. <laughs> like, that's good, yeah. Top part. But he's a big crab. Look at that Don't one. need to measure him. It's deformed, kind of. Short. Short, right? Short. Close. Good. Double, Double keeper. We'll take Double. it. Ow! Ooh. Ooh, Ooh! Look! Pinch the glove there. Almost got he her. He got finger. my nail inside. He ain't letting go of the glove though. Ooh, I felt him like bite down on my so nail. So this is a different way to do it. If you don't want to pinch the claws off, you stick the knife in here yeah. and they drop it right off. <laughs> we'll show you on this one too. So this is the other the knife trick. We do this a lot too, especially if it's like people just starting out doing it. They'll put the knife in there and once you kind of hit towards that joint, they'll drop it. And then you don't rip out the armpit. Look, he's growing back a little nub there, see? You have another small one growing back there, too. Nice. Oh, there's a little baby in there. Nice. <laughs> Looking good, you guys. Gonna be a heck of a haul. Last haul. They ate that one crab there. They will eat each other. They're carnivorous. That's the right word. Boat weight coming, make sure you're hanging on. Cannibals. Cannibals. Cannibalists, not carnivorous. Of course carnivorous. they're carnivorous. I mean, they yeah, carnivorous means they eat meat. I guess. They're cannibalistic. Keepers, double. Short on that one, but that one is more than good. Double. Double trouble. Landon. They say bananas are bad luck on boats. That's my banana. Claire wants it. <laughs> but we are crushing the crabs. It's a heck of a heck of a pull down the season on. See their legs. See any? Yeah. Looking good, guys. Looking good. Oh yeah, it might be a big one there, it looked like. One look pretty nice. 
We're gonna find out. Oh, oh yeah, that's oh man, look at the size of this jumbo. That one there's got a big old claw on him there. That one, ooh, he's angry. Don't get got by that one. Look at that one there. Now that is a stone crab there. Good one. This crab here has one legal size claw and one smaller one. He definitely grew back the smaller one before. Ooh, they are angry. We got angry birds, we got angry crabs, angry stone crabs, so. Sarah says, you want me to go right in here, right? Yeah, but like towards his armpit. Like in here more, right? Yep, exactly. So she wants me to go right along the edge there, instead of kind of going more in the middle there. Let's see if he drops it, he dropped it. Oops. Claw goes in the bucket, crab goes overboard. So this one here, that might, that one's long, and this other claw here is pretty long. That's a keeper too. Woo! Oh, his foot came through and tickled me. <laughs> <laughs> the crab leg, the crab leg came through there and it hit her and she jumped. I thought it was a crab going after okay, my toes. So now that Sarah has instructed me, instead of going in the middle of the meat there, she wants to go right along Whoa, the so edge here. Exactly hit it, right on the edge there. And it seems to and like, it drops off a little quicker and easier. Yeah. Oh my God, I almost threw it in. Almost threw it in. I almost threw it in. So same one on this side here. It's like that, pops it. And you don't dig up the hunk of meat. That's yep, you don't mean. dig up the hunk of meat there. Double. Drop it. It's their natural instinct to drop it, you know, when there's pressure and stuff like that. So you hit they feel it. like a predator has a hold of them. Like in nature, if a shark grabbed him, they could drop the claw, sacrifice the claw. And this one's missing themselves. a leg too, so he's already missing a That'll leg. Go but back these crabs are pretty hardy, you know, yeah. they live without legs, without claws, and they're scavengers a lot of times. Sometimes they're on the hunt, but when we catch them in traps, they're just scavengers, you know, they crawl on the bottom. One more. I see legs. I think there's one nice one in there. Catfish. A catfish. There's a catfish in there, you guys. I okay. These catfish can spine you, and they have venom, venom in them. They're venomous, and they can really hurt you. So that's a nasty catfish right there. See it, Sadie? See him, Sadie? Ew, we're gonna let him go. What a way to end the stone crab season here. What a way to end it. There you go. Oh, there, big one, definitely a keeper, yep. Okay. Last crab of the seat. Well, <laughs> we are missing a trap, which I think I'm gonna jump in and try to retrieve the trap in a few minutes, so if I can find it, it might be gone. But this is probably the last crab of the seat. The last unless crab find, of the season. Unless we find that other crab. That's and a double, double keepers. Thing. Double. Good way to end. Till next year. Good job. We're trying to get our thumbnail. We need to get a picture of these crabs. Okay, he's moving down towards it. What do you want to do? Pick them up? Yeah, I'm going to hold them back, <laughs> yeah. back legs. Why are they so mean? Ooh, that's a Watch big crab there. Landing. We're trying to, we were getting a thumbnail here, you guys, and that crab just crushed this other one right here. Just like smashed it in there, so they're strong. But epic way to end the season. Woo! Right close to our limit there. What do you think, Claire? You like it? You wanna touch him? Touch him. Say hi, Crabby. You wanna eat him? Claire loves stone crab. So we're gonna roll these off here like this. The second I take my glove Pop off. Pop it off like that. You got pinched? That's why you keep gloves on. No, I didn't get pinched. I yeah. just got sliced. And these big claws, I mean, that is a massive there. Well, there. So we roll it and pop it and a break. And that's a good clean break. So that's what you want. Or you can use a knife. So grab in the water, claw on the boat here. And that is a jumbo there. Go left. Go this way, Steve. Turn left. We're teaching Sadie how to drive the boat. She's learning the young. Keep going left, okay? Keep turning it. So let go of that hand and keep turning it. Push the wheel. The wheel will turn like that. Yeah, keep turning it. Keep going. There you go. Good job. Hopefully she'll be a captain one day. Uh, hopefully she'll do whatever she wants, but I'd love to see her be a captain have her own boat too. Claire's got a few more years to catch up to her. There you go. Slow down. Here, go back this way. Putting up a dive flag. In case, if we can find our cutoff trap here, you know, the old one from earlier this season, we're going to pull it out so it'll jump in, but we're 39 feet from it now where it was. Sometimes the boats run by. You know, you've seen a lot of boats already running, running by. 
they'll pick them up and they'll drag them and it might go 100 feet or so, or a couple hundred feet, then the buoy rips up and it breaks off. So we're gonna try to get as close as we can to the mark. And then if we see it, Sarah will jump in. Where's crying? Everyone's over. Everyone's tired of crabbing there. We got blood up here. Trying to wipe the blood away. Sadie hates blood. She's screaming. Yeah, let me get my clothes Okay, jump in. Sarah's gonna jump in and look for it. Okay, Sarah's gonna jump in and look for it. the shot. We looked around, found a couple cutoffs, but they weren't ours, so looks like we're out of trap this season. What song? I like to dance, dance, dance with my hands. I like to dance, dance, dance with my hands, hands, hands. That could be it right there. This could be the trap. We're getting ready to leave. We drifted about 150 feet away from where she got in the boat at. She goes, there's a trap down there. Just changed her shirt. She's putting on the wet one again, going back in. She said she can see a rope. She's in. This could be us. False hope. We thought it was it. Thought we had a miracle. No miracle. Low bridge. Danger. I'll sleep on me on the way home. She's tired. I want you to crank you. Sadie. Oh, Sadie's passed out too. So both the girls fell asleep. Crabbing Maybe crabbing's boring. They didn't even do anything. Or it's a lot of work. I should take it now. They got up early, I'll tell you that. Exciting news, you guys. You can now get Blue Wave online direct from them on their website. We've been using it to keep our boats clean the last year. We do the X3 with it. We do the Freeman with it. They got a bunch of different products. That's just regular boat soap right here. But we use the rust remover all the time. We use the new fish box cleaner. And the best thing about this stuff is it's biodegradable. It breaks down and it doesn't hurt the environment. So give it a try. Go to the website. We'll put the link below. Go check out Blue Wave, you guys. Great product to use on the boat. And we're going to wash this boat down now from crabbing. So Sarah made this brush. She took out the extension in it. So it's only about four foot tall. So if you're tall, like I'm 5'9", but I had to bend over some. But if you're like six foot, six foot two, you gotta bend over to scrub the boat because she likes it being short, because she's short and it also fits in the, but actually does it even fit in the hatch? It does when it's short. Okay, so if it just fits in the, ha fits in the hatch. There's a method to my madness. Okay. So there's a method to the madness there, but we're gonna wash the whole boat here. She's gonna pressure wash some of the stuff in the back. We'll double check the fish box here, make sure it's still clean. Clean from last time, so we'll put a little fresh in there, get a little better smell, but. Nice and clean. We're gonna keep doing this, then Sarah will pressure wash it. We're gonna go home, boil up the crabs, and I don't know. Obviously, you can just eat them when we boil them, but we may. I'm thinking about some sort of like stone crab toast, you know, like a late afternoon snack there. I don't know exactly what, but you guys are gonna see it when we get it done. Welcome back to the kitchen. So, yesterday we brought all the crab claws home. We boiled them right at 10 minutes, and uh, you want a nice hard boil. Claire was here helping out. We cracked a few, ate them by the pool. The kids absolutely love them. She was around eating them. But Charlie just got back into town. We want to show you a fancy recipe with these stone crabs. Right now, we've already cracked a bunch of them. We're picking the meat out of here, and Charlie's going to come do a little gourmet treat here in a few minutes. Obviously, you guys have seen us just eat them like normally, you know, where you crack them, dip them in butter or the mustard sauce, you know, kind of like equivalent to Joe's stone crab sauce. But uh, we want to show you one now. Sometimes we have a floater, and if you guys don't know what that is, you'll get a stone crab claw here. And you'll think, you know, it'd be good size like that. It's a big size claw. But when you go to, when you boil it, it'll float in the pot. And if you look in here, you can see the meat doesn't fill the shell all the way up. And it's only like half the meat it should be. So that is a floater. And it's kind of disappointing because sometimes you think you got this big giant claw and you open it up and it's like half the meat that it should be. But Sarah's going to show you cracking one big claw over there. And it felt really heavy, so it should be full. Yeah, and all we're doing for this cool. here is, you know, we're just picking the meat off these. So yeah, look at the gap in between. You can see the gap. 
in the meat there. How much there. meat there should be. It should be touching the shell. It should be so right up against the shell. shell so she'll crack this one here. Oh, big one. Yeah, but watch. Look at the juice. See how that goes right up there? And just look at the difference there. So floater, kind of disappointing. That's a good claw there. We're going to keep pulling the meat off here. And uh, we're filling this up. Charles will be here soon. And we'll show you guys the next step. I'm not exactly sure what he's doing. Like crab cakes, he said, right? Yeah. Some cakes. sort of crab cake. So he's from Maryland. so Connecticut. You know, Maryland. <laughs> we got North, Northeastern people here. We got to please tonight. We got to pick all the meat out then. So we're picking the meat off. This is the not so fun part. But it's we're... Uh, Oh, we're halfway done, and we had a bunch yesterday already. So, here we go. And don't forget, comment below, whoever gets closest to the total amount of stone crab claws harvested, give me a nice performance shirt, whatever you guys want off the website. So We counted, we know the number. We counted, we know the number. Whoever guesses it, you guys got a shot. Bonafide World Guide Charlie is here. Check out his YouTube channel. He's been on some epic adventures lately, but he's got us to the next step of cooking. What's going on? Well, I heard you guys caught a bunch of stone crabs the other day. We did. And it's just not a proper way to try something new with stone crabs, unless you're doing stone crab cakes. You ever had those before? Never had them. Well, as you know, I'm from the Chesapeake Bay, and uh, we do crab cakes up there. Typically, you don't get stone crab in those waters. You get blue crab, but stone crab is a very light, delicate meat. And one of the biggest problems with crab cakes today is that they're made with too much filling. You ever have a crab cake that's full of bread and just nonsense and it's like all a bread ball and no crab? I don't eat crab cakes, but I know what you're talking about. So you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Same thing with conch fritters, right? Is all breading. Well, no that's problem. not how crab cake is supposed to be. So we're going to do this a little bit differently. We're going to make these more like lump style crab cakes. So this is a Chesapeake style of making a crab cake where it's mostly meat and when you have beautiful crab like this, you just can't say no. Now, haven't done this with stone crab in a long time. We typically do it with blue crab, which is a lighter, more delicate texture. But the stone crab itself, well, that's a more buttery meat. So I think this is actually going to come out really good. So we got some really core ingredients for our crab cakes here. More like broiled crab cakes. More, we're not going to fry today. We're trying to be a little healthier, right? Perfect. So I'm going to show you some of these basic ingredients, and we're going to get to it. Now, this is the uh, this is a cornerstone ingredient for pretty much any kind of crab cake or fish cake that you want to make. It's a secret. It's that Ritz cracker. Some people use breadcrumbs, which don't have a lot of flavor, but the Ritz cracker, it's crispy, it's buttery, it's salty. It's got everything you need to make a really delicious cake. And when you broil it in the oven, it gets extra crispy on top, and that's what everybody likes. So you want to use Ritz crackers crushed and crumbled as your base instead of bread or crackers or some other weird substitute like panko breadcrumbs or something like that. Now to make an actual cake, and actually do an actual fritter, there's a couple core ingredients that you're going to need. First things first, you got to have your aromatics. So we've got some fresh scallion, you can use chive if you want. We've got some lemon, which we're going to zest and use the juice, and we have some fresh parsley. You don't want to overpower anything with that, otherwise everything gets complicated. And then you've got your cornerstone spice, a little bit of Old Bay. Very easy to get yourself in trouble with Old Bay. A little bit goes a long way. You don't want to use too much. A little bit of real mayo. That's a really nice base. Again, gives it some consistency. You don't want to go crazy on that because no one likes a ton of mayonnaise. A little bit of Dijon mustard, just to step it up. I like to use Grey Poupon, but any Dijon mustard will work. A little bit of white truffle oil goes a long way if you're into that whole truffle thing. And then a little bit of garlic powder. Put those all together in the right combination, you got yourself a potent little mix. So the method is in the madness. Let me show you how we do this. It's everyone's favorite cracker, America's cracker. I don't like to use a whole stack. I like to use about three quarters of a stack. And we're just going to go ahead and crush those up. You don't want any big chunks, just enough, because we're going to blend all this together. That's about it for that. And we're going to tell what the consistency is real quick by the time we're done. We're going to go ahead and put in a little bit of our Dijon mustard sauce here. So you can measure this out if you want. You can use a tablespoon. I like to just kind of eyeball it a little bit. And we're going to taste it. So we're just going to use a little bit of Dijon mustard in there. Need a little bit of mayo for our base as well. Put in a little bit of that white truffle oil. This is where you actually kind of have to be kind of careful because this stuff is very potent. 
we're going to use about a half a tablespoon there. And if we need a little more at the end, we can do that. This we're going to do to taste. Stan Spam doesn't like super peppery, so we're going to go nice and easy on this. Get the beans favorite. Old Bay. Old Bean. The Maryland boys are in the house. That's Bean's favorite sauce. That's what, from, you know, if you're from Maryland, this is in your blood. There's nothing you can do about it. You're, you're raised on it. You know that, this is what the Chesapeake smells like. You know that smell? I don't like Go it. Go on, take a big whiff. <laughs> take a big whiff. <laughs> Come on, it's good for you. Strong stuff. <laughs> I'll stick to stone crab. Just a little bit. Again, we don't want to overpower it too much. So we're going to come back and taste that. We're going to put a little bit of garlic powder in there, not too much at all. You can use fresh garlic, but a little goes a long way. We're going to add some lemon juice in here. About half a lemon will do it. And then we're going to take a little bit of this fresh parsley and a little bit of that chopped scallion or chive, whatever you prefer. Not too much, just a little bit. And we're good. And when you mix this, you don't want to make it into a total mush. You want to kind of give it enough of a consistency that it's well blended, but that the crab isn't broken up into a paste. Now this is stone crab, it's very chunky meat, it's very different than blue crab. We're going to kind of mash that around a little bit and make some nice, even blend. And that smells great. You can really smell the lemon, you can really smell the parsley. You're getting a nice flavor there. Again, we want to try and keep it as chunky as we can. We're not going to crush it too much. Just enough so that it'll stick together. Some people like to throw a whole egg in there. I'm not really much of an egg guy, so we're gonna skip that part. Your mixture should be mostly crab meat. Are you cooking this in the oven? I'm yeah, gonna... we're gonna broil this up. So should I turn the oven on? Not yet, because we're only gonna use the broiler. And that's pretty much what you're looking for right there. Now you can do this with butter, but a little bit of oil is really all you need. Sometimes butter adds an extra layer of flavor to it that you don't need. So I like to use just a little bit of oil just at the bottom of the pan. And with these, again, we're not making huge crab cakes. We're not making those giant big things mold together. So we're just gonna take these little pieces here. We're gonna kind of form them up. And these are just gonna be kind of small, just like that. And looking good. We're just gonna set them down, just like that. And we're gonna make a couple of these. And those smell really, really nice. Remember, all this meat is cooked. It's ready to go. The whole point of doing this is that we're going to crisp them up. Charlie's got me helping out now. Is that good? I don't know whether you knew this about Nick, but he learns to cook real fast. <laughs> that enough? You want more? That's good. Okay. You want me to rub it around? Too. Yeah, yeah. Rub it around. Uh, we're rubbing around. you got to get the oil everywhere, you guys. This is just a little extra Ritz cracker. We're just going to sprinkle a little bit of that on top there. We're just going to put a little, just a little topper. All right, just a little tiny little bit of lemon juice on top there. Yes, now you can turn the oven down to low broil. Another broil is like 500? That's high broil. You don't want to do high broil, you're going to do low broil. High broil, we're going to have some burnt cakes here. Mike's from the island of the mountains. Landon, the cameraman, who lives in Connecticut, apparently, which is like, there's good seafood in Connecticut, right? Like, it's yeah, north. Yeah, it's north absolutely. eastern seaboard, yeah. He's never really had seafood, so poor Landon is like in a house of seafood. Well, he's in for a treat then. He's yeah, we're going to force Charlie's the crab, crab ball down his mouth. He's got bona fide world guy crab cakes. He ate some swordfish the other deal. day and loved it, though, from Jamaican Mike. Yeah, that so. was good swordfish that Mike made the other day. That was delicious. Between 1982 and 1994 is millennials. So that's all of us. There you go, Diamond. 
You like crab? That's what her shirt says. You psyched us out. It's crab. You want it? Stone crab. Yummy. Here. Here you go, Claire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now you want to eat it there on the shelf. She didn't recognize it. <laughs> Kids. Well, that's a beautiful looking crab cake. These are stone crab cakes. This is an adaptation of what we do in the Chesapeake Bay. Everywhere you go in the Chesapeake Bay will tell you they have the best crab cake recipe, but I assure you, even though this may not be the best, it is one of the best. It comes from a place called Tillman Island. You ever heard of that? It's known for the crab cakes. And we've done this with this beautiful stone crabs that Sarah and Nick were most gracious to provide. Doesn't get a lot better than that. A little bit of fresh citrus slaw. This should be a feast. But let's leave it up to the professionals. Let's let the, the real proof here is gonna be how it tastes, of course. So it's dinner time. We're gonna get into this. Let's see how it goes. Claire, you want some, sweetie? She wants the whole claw. Claire eats more stone crab than any other two-year-old in the world, probably. Oh my God, it's dripping juice on the chair. Whoops. <laughs> Do I need to put more lemon juice on? You think it's good? I mean, I don't go crazy because you never know. You never, you never know with you. So I always okay. try and keep it on the light side. If you need some more lemon. Go for it. I'm putting a little more lemon on here. We're excited to try it out. A little bit of lemon juice here. Clear it out. I don't think I've ever actually had a crab cake in my entire life. I'm not a big crab eater. I definitely don't like blue crab for like a couple bites. I've tried it like a lump of crab. But stone crab, I think, tastes better from the, you know, my experience. I don't know if Charlie agrees with me or not. But Charlie's crab cake, going down. Wow, this is going to be epic. I got a piece of shell. That's your, that's, your, that's your fault. I didn't clean these crabs. That was on you guys. It tasted pretty good, not gonna lie. I oh, did get a piece of shell. That's out. good. Is there mustard in here? There is some Dijon mustard. So I'm not a huge mustard eater. I could taste a little bit of it, but it's not overwhelming, so I like it. Good job, Charlie. If you've ever tried cooking for Nick, you gotta know, you gotta know a couple of things. He eats nothing. The guy exists on meatloaf, water, and oh. butter lettuce. That's it. She got a shell too. I got a shell too. Who picked this meat apart? You did. We did. You did. We gotta get other people's opinion to see how it is. Let's eat it, right? It's got crackers in it. Yeah. Like crackers yeah. in it. Yeah. Yeah. So he doesn't like it, I think? Okay, there might be a few shells in it because Nick picked them. No, 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 no. <laughs> we picked them. <laughs> and I didn't have to get any shells in mine. <laughs> now we need to get everyone else's opinions too. Yeah. Have you ever had a crab cake before? Yeah. So, so like yeah. Well, I mean, you can get crab cakes at a lot of restaurants. It's, they're probably not stone crab. Usually they're blue crab. Yeah. What do you think? Good. Good? You like it? You approve? Yeah. You approve, Charlie. You it? How about that? We like it. We like when people are smiling and happy here. I think it's really good. Very good. I knew it. <laughs> we love it. In her experience? Lot, I've had a lot of crab cakes. Watch this. And that is exactly Charlie. the proper formula. Good for texture. Effective Tillman Charlie. Island style crab cake. They'd be proud of you. They'd be Charlie. happy. Okay, good. Well, good job. Watch this, Charlie. I'm Charlie. Watching. Lemon paste. The crab cakes can be left to be Did you get a shell yet? Did you, get, did you guys get a shell? Yeah. You did? Yep. Did you eat it? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Calcium. It yeah, is. yeah, definitely. Sure enough. Good for you. Good for your teeth. That's why you're starting your teeth up. <laughs> All right, well, that wraps that one up, you guys. Hope you enjoyed that video. Check out Charlie's channel, Bonafide World Guide to keep up with his traveling antics. And uh, coming down here to Alamorada, Bud and Mary's, check it out. If you want any gear, head to the website, stancefishing.com. All of our hats, our board shorts just got back in stock, our fishing shorts that are on there, our T-shirts, our performance shirts. So go check it out. Let us know what you think. We'll see you guys next time. I'm out.